Okay, we're live back here, you know, towards the end of the day here in Santa, the Santa Clara for the Cassandra Summit. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. Uh, this is our the Cube, our flagship telecast. We go out to the event, talk to the smartest people we can find, and ex extract the signal from the noise. And uh, we love data, and Cassandra is the big data show. Uh, Hadoop, Cassandra, all this stuff's changing the world. No sequels, really driving on the scene. And you know, data is part of it. And our next guest is Eric and Russ, who Eric's the CEO of Simple Reach. CTO. CTO. I'm sorry. CTO. Okay. It's okay. Yep. Um, from New Jersey, so I'm not going to hold it against you. What exit? I got to ask. I grew up in New Jersey. At 18, but yeah. I live in New York City now. <laughs> New York City's hot right now. Good startup environment, guys. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. And you're a chief architect. Uh, yeah, principal architect. Yeah, principal architect, great. So, um, Eric and Russ, Eric, let's start with you. Obviously, Cassandra, you guys have to play with data. You offer a service. But first, tell the folks out there, what is Simple Reach uh, product? You guys are a startup, you're growing really fast. Um, talk about what your company does and the product as we'll jump into the conversation. Sure, so uh, Simple Reach is a social intelligence tool for content creators. Um, we track uh, all, all the social actions that happen across the web in real time. So we're talking likes, pins, tweets, digs, shares, uh, you name it, um, you know, we got our hands on it. And uh, we take people, uh, we take content creators, anything from video, um, articles, uh, we track it from the instant that it's published and we assign it a, a score. Um, this way content creators can see how well their articles are doing socially. So you guys, what just went to your site, seems like you guys are in beta or only member only at this point? Yeah, so we're it's in public. It's like a Quantcast meets PageRank, right? Uh, yeah, I mean we like to call ourselves the PageRank for social. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a big statement, but uh, we know we can do it. So obviously the elusive term is engagement, right? Everyone wants to know engagement, that's the right. holy grail. Um, we've been covering social for a long time at SiliconANGLE. We have a labs group that we've been playing with it. Um, we cover this moment, which is, which is a, the last independent kind of social media platform out there. Buddy Media got bought. I mean, yes. it's a hot area, right? Yes, I mean, absolutely. Buddy Media, Wildfire just got sold to Google. Yep. It's crazy. Radiant 6 is gone. They were one of the early pioneers in monitoring, kind of Twitter, if you will. But, but now, this is a paradigm that's not about just social, it's about user behavior. Mm -hmm. So advertisers want to know what's going on too, right? right. Like, who should I buy? You know, paid views worth anything? So banner advertising is shifting to more engagement in social networks. You guys track any of that stuff too, or how does that relate to that trend? So we actually started out with ad tech. Um, ad tech is obviously a very interesting space. Um, there's been a lot of major ad tech acquisitions in the social space, as you mentioned, Buddy Media. Um, we happen to know a bunch of those guys. You know, New York City being the uh, mecca for ad tech. Um, there's clearly a lot going on there. But um, we started out in ad tech and we realized that what people were really interested in was the social aspect of it. People would say, well this is great, but how, how engaged are people socially? Are they, are they, is this ad something that they may want to tweet? Is this something that they're going to want to share with their friends? And we found that this question kept coming up over and over and over. And we realized that there was no real way to get at this data. Uh, so we started aggregating all the social data that we could find for um, our publishers, the ones that we were working with. And we found that giving them the ability to mine it was really what they were after. It's not something that, that they know how to do and that they're capable of doing. So are you guys funded? VC funded, angel yes. funded? We, uh, we, have a, we have a seed round. Um, we are very shortly going to be looking for our, our Series A uh, sometime in the next six months or so. Can you say who the angel investors are? So uh, I can tell you that um, as of right now, we are uh, led by High Peaks um, and the other major investors, Village Ventures. Uh, and, and that's about as much as I can say for right now. <laughs> um, we're talking to a bunch of people. A, a bunch it's a of hot market for startups right now. I mean, big yeah. data, just if you spell Hadoop or Cassandra, you're in, right? Yeah, I I, mean, actually we're, we're both here to speak. Um, I spoke this morning and Russ is going to be speaking uh, a little bit later today. So we're not only working with Cassandra, but we're really sort of helping push the, um, the, the, the industry forward. Great, so let's get into some of the meat and potatoes because it's a fun market. Big data totally. is changing the world. Um, and getting insights is great, right? So, but the hard part is building a system that's um, specialized yet general purpose because you've got diversity of data sets. So yes. one of the things that Jeff Kelly and I have been talking about is, you know, we believe in is that it's not about the data, it's about the mashups, right? And so you have an ingestion issue. I need to ingest the data, I need to act on the data. So, and, and, and to be real time, you've got to be fast. So you can't just park it out, then run algorithms on it. You've kind of got to do a lot of things and on the ingestion point, and then kind of when you, where you store it. So it requires some semantic analysis. So mm -hmm. take us through how you guys look at that, 
Um, and what are you guys doing with Cassandra and, uh, to address that? Yeah, so um, I'm going to start out and then I'm going to let Russ talk a little bit here. Um, one of the things that we're actually here to talk about today is that uh, because we have so many different aspects of our system, we've We've built what's called, uh, what we like to call polyglotomy. Like, we have a bunch of different types of data stores to service different parts of our application. So we use Cassandra for, for big data, high volume, high velocity ingestion. Um, and when we want to see the deeper analytics, we use a MySQL column store, which is InfoBright. Um, when we want to show our real-time data, we use Mongo. Um, and we, we have a front-end caching engine, and we use Redis for that. And all of that stuff, is only really possible because of what this guy did. Um, what this guy did was he built, uh, there was already an existing Node.js driver for Cassandra, but uh, it really wasn't capable of doing everything we needed it to do. So he, wrote the, he rewrote the Node.js driver for Cassandra, um, basically single-handedly, and, uh, and put us in such a position so that we can talk to any data store and provide any, or act on any request in a manner that would be fitting for the request type. So I'm going to let him talk a little bit about okay. our edge servers Before and our Before you internal. jump in, Russ, I want to, that's fantastic. Congratulations, by the way, Russ. Um, so we, were, we did the cube at the Node Summit. Okay. So we love Node. Node has become really functional. In a lot of new ways that people weren't even, that were clever. So, so we love it. So I want you to expand out on specifically what you did with Node and why was Node so instrumental in making that happen? Um, well, Node.js is extremely great at, at uh, doing the, of, I guess, kind of doing multiple requests concurrently, and and IO and doing this with IO bound sources. Since we're in the Amazon cloud, everything we do is is IO bound. Um, so anything we do, like sending requests off to data stores, uh, writing to disk, writing log files, etc., um, is is a lot more efficient using Node.js. Uh, we do this all on our edge servers to, to kind of... In the which, cloud. In the cloud, yes. Our, our edge servers in the cloud that do the actual data ingestion are doing uh, thousands of requests per second on a very few amount of servers. How's your EC2 bill look like? It's actually pr not it's pretty bad. amazing what we do. Because you're using S3 and EC2 on the Actually, we're not using S3 for, for nearly anything. Um, okay. All the, everything that we do is, we have, give or take, um, a little over 50 instances. Uh, about 30 of those are dedicated to, data, to database engines, and what's amazing is that what handles all of our data processing happens on about 10 servers in total. All of our real-time, all of our batch processing, yeah. everything handles on, is handled on about 10 servers, and, and like, like I said, a lot so of it's So where are you storing all the data? On-prem? Uh, Cassandra on, on ephemeral drives. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it's because it's you know, a couple terabytes here and there's no big deal. Okay, yeah. continue. So go ahead, continue um, to tell us more. So all the data ingestion happens on, on Node.js side servers because it's extremely fast and, and the key thing that we like about it is we can respond back down to the client saying that the request is complete before it even gets written to the data source. Um, we don't have to write it to each individual data store, um, which there's probably about 10 to 15 writes that happen for every single page view request we get. Um, in addition, to, in addition to data ingestion and, and just high volumes concurrency, we also use it as, as, an, as an API lever, layer for our, our service-oriented architecture. We kind of wrap all of, all of our data stores uh, in, in this abstraction, uh, which is powered by Node.js, so, so that we can kind of return to all of the various clients. Almost every language can speak in JSON, and we use multiple languages for what, you know, what they're good for. So, it kind of makes that a lot easy, a lot easier, and and it's it's high, it's very high performance for what it does, without having to drop down to something that's going to take a lot of development time, like C or Java. So take me through the value proposition. Now I'm a customer. We have SiliconAngle. Um, dot com. We have a website, and you know we have no ads on our site, so we're not really in the ad tech business because mm -hmm. we essentially we're free. Um, we collect data though, we, you know, we have an HBase implementation, we store all the data of our site and also all the third party, our external data of our audience. But one of the things that we say to people who work with us, hey, you know, we're very effective in social networks. How do you guys measure the, that? So is it because, is there a overhang in terms of the metrics? Because it's not just per tweets, there's gravity, like in the social networks, word of mouth has legs, so the time is a dimension. Totally. So there's a time totally. series aspect. Do you guys look at that? Yeah, so we, um, we actually have a data science team that uh, does do all sorts of um, valuable insights. We actually have a section of our site that we're going to be launching very shortly called Insights. 
um, which is going to be push insights. Because the great thing about analytics is that as long as you know which question to ask, it's a fantastic set of data. Problem is, is a lot of people don't know what questions to ask, especially when, when it comes yeah. to, the, to social media. So that's what one of the values that, uh, that we provide and our data science team provides. But in, in terms of what our value prop is, from the moment that an article is published, we will take a look at it across every social network. We're going to track every action, we're going to track the value of that action. So do I have to put in something, an API key in my analytics? Is no, so analytics? all you have to do is throw some code, throw some JavaScript on your page. Um, and you know, the, the, the low, uh, low friction entry point that we're doing for most of our clients is most people use WordPress. So we've written yeah. a WordPress plugin and we, we say one. just throw this on there and uh, it gives us the, the title, the URL, the author, and, and some Great. other basic data. So how do we, get, how do we demo it? Um, or how much does it cost? Content publishers aren't very, you know, they don't like to pay. Yes, we, we, you know. we know it's, it's yeah. like getting water from a stone. <laughs> <laughs> We've experienced this. But actually... Um, we want it for free, right, Mark? <laughs> everybody Mark, wants Mark's it for like, free. <laughs> but actually... Um, yeah, but I know Forbes is doing some work with Word, Word Nick and others. They're trying to figure out how to do better, because online is not like a, a book. It's not, right. There's no beginning and end. Online behavior is not like a Absolutely. magazine. So people want insights on how to best serve their audience. Right, so one of the things that we do is when we provide you this page rank for, uh, for social, we give you the ability to, to actually catch content as it's trending up. I mean, there's no use in trying to put ad spend behind an article or push it out on Facebook yeah. when it's on its way down. Yeah. We know when it's going up, we know when it's going down. We have this beautiful thing that we call economy of scale. And because we know and have seen so many articles and we've seen what the paths are and we know when the trajectory is going up and the tra trajectory is going down, we can tell you. And we can tell you, no, don't paddle up river with this. You know, put your, put your spend behind this article or now would be a great time to post this to Facebook. We know you have 1.5 million fans on your Facebook page. If you want to catch this going up, push it now. We can, we can do things like that for you. Yeah, I think it's compelling. I think you don't know it yet, but I think you're in the ad tech business. We know we're in the ad tech we business. So, so, yep. Okay, good. So, <laughs> we we absolutely think, know we're in the ad tech okay, business, good. but it's just not our first pitch. Yeah, yeah, well they're not ready for you. Right. It's too early, um, but. There's no such thing as too early or too late. You just have to be early enough so that you don't miss yeah, the boat. Yeah, exactly. All right, get in front of the wave or so you're, or you're driftwood, as Pat Gelsinger would say. Yes. Russ, yes. Eric, great. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. I look forward to following up. I want to follow you guys, plus uh, the Jersey Connection. Nice to, uh, and New York. Uh, we love the East Coast. Love that <laughs> mojo. And New York's hot right now. Love the scene in New York. Yes. Got to love yeah. the, uh, how New York's just trumped Boston. Uh, in terms of the entrepreneurialness. Although Boston's got a little good big data mojo coming back in Boston too, so you got to watch yeah. out. So, okay, we'll be right back. Cassandra, a lot of action, a lot of startups. These guys are speaking. Uh, Simplereach.com, go join. Check out their service. Cutting edge work in the cloud. Node.js, this is what it's all about. Uh, we'll be right back more live from Silicon Valley right after this.